really view myself as an enabler of uh, technology. Um, and I think it's my job and my responsibility to understand what the clinicians or the really smart people are trying to figure out how to do uh, and make sure that they have the technology platforms uh, to leverage to accomplish those goals and objectives. Um, and I think that's uh, varied um, as we look at over the last five years in terms of what they, uh, what clinicians wanted and needed and, and, and that will vary again to um, if we look at five, you know, five years out in terms of uh, what they need. So, uh, so my job again is an enabler of technology. I'm not leading those discussions, but I'm in the discussions to make sure that I understand uh, what we're trying to accomplish. Um, that we do a very good job of understanding what the business requirements are, what the technology underpinnings um, are that uh, that will enable. Uh, the transformation or the uh, the implementation that they're trying to achieve and make sure that those pieces and parts are in place so that we can execute well together as a team. I think if you look at more traditional AI, which is more data driven, um, even, you know, somewhat um, akin and, and adjacent to predictive analytics, you really want a good place to store your data. Um, so we look at and have been looking here at Michigan Medicine um, to the cloud to enable us to leverage things like data fabric and data lakes and being able to contain data, collect data so that we can present data back in a, in a very robust way. And that will fuel what I'll call more predictive analytics or um, more traditional AI as it relates to machine learning. Um, on um, metrics that that may matter to patient care or patient safety, we've got uh, we've got an initiative underway to move a lot of our medical images uh, to the cloud so that we're storing those in the most uh, cost-effective way. Um, but that will enable us to uh, essentially build cohorts of um, of patients uh, that we may want to analyze in certain ways uh, that will have. Um, uh, will have available to us kind of the latest and greatest compute and storage technologies uh, that'll, uh, you know, that'll enable um, analyzing the medical images in a way that um, is adjacent to uh, the radiologists that are performing uh, those views um, in real time and be able to provide really good insights as to where they should look or whether they potentially um, uh, need to pay attention in particular areas. So we're doing things from a, a medical imaging perspective, we're doing things from a digital pathology perspective, and we're trying to merge all of our ologies into this uh, cloud-based hosted solution. So uh, that'll enable us to inject AI into that particular landscape in a particularly unique way. And then as you look at, and we've mentioned generative AI, um, we've also stood up and have an ability to leverage um, uh, Azure's OpenAI environment. So if we want to do queries uh, against uh, generative AI, um, we're exploring how to do that um, within some of our applications. So within things like Nuance and Epic, um, that'll be provided by the vendors. But we are looking at how we Michigan Medicine might leverage those technologies. So we've stood up some sandbox environments within our OpenAI subscription and landscape, and we're beginning to look at data. And um, we think medical billing may be a particular area of interest uh, that has applicability as it relates to generative AI and, and some of um, uh, some of our associate um, uh, medical officers are looking at um, uh, implementing those types of tools and technologies. So there's you know, as you look at AI, it, it's we, 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 it's only two letters, but it means a lot of very different things and there are different categories and we're trying to meet the needs of all of those different types of AI use cases so that we can deliver results back to the organization.